Welcome to another edition of Inside Town Hall. I am Jim Cameron, the host of this program and the program director of Darien TV 79. Uh, this is a program where we talk to the, the chairs of various boards and commissions to get a better understanding of their work and what they do to help the town be a better place. Um, and our guest today on the program is George Riley, who is the chairman of the Blight Review Board, also a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission. George, great to have you on the program. Hey, Jim, thanks very much. I do appreciate your interest. Good. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your, your background, uh, your professional background, and then some of the work that you've done in various town boards and commissions. Sure. Be delighted. I am an attorney, have been since 1984, and have practiced in and around Darien uh, virtually all of that time. Um, I have been, as a Darien-oriented attorney, something of a generalist in uh, doing a lot of real estate work, estate planning, estate administration. I do that with other attorneys. Uh, I'm with the Rucci Law Group now, and they, uh, they back me up in all those kinds of things. The focus of my work throughout that period uh, since 84 has been matrimonial and family law. So that uh, I still at that, and um, um, that has been a good thing for me. But I feel like as a local attorney, you ought to give back to your town. And I have to say that I am born and raised in Darien. I'm married to Darien. I had raised my kids here, really been here a uh, lifetime darn near. So I enjoy giving back to Darien where uh, it is willing to take my, uh, my input. So that began actually with the Charter Revision Commission back in about uh, 1999, uh, where we gave it an effort over a couple of years. Uh, and immediately after uh, the failure of that Charter Revision, I joined the Board of Selectmen for a couple of years. And uh, uh, mm, was I the sacrificial lamb? I don't know, but I did run for first selectman uh, soon thereafter against uh, Bob Harrell. And we had a very civilized, uh, very interesting campaign. And uh, it, of course, resulted in Bob being reelected as first selectman. Soon thereafter, I joined the Board of Education here in town, which I served on for, I think, uh, 11 years, an odd number of years, because I took the seat of a departing member of the Board of Ed. Uh, when I got off of the Board of Ed, um, I, uh, it was a little while before I served the town again. I joined uh, the Norwalk Community College Foundation, actually, uh, about 10 or more years ago. I do now serve as the chair of that foundation. So my interest in education continues, but uh, the uh, um, local uh, powers that be suggested that uh, I might be useful serving in, on the Planning and Zoning Commission. So I did join the Planning and Zoning Commission. I think it's, uh, I'm now finishing three years. Uh, we get four year terms, so I'm up for reelection next November. And as part of that service, um, the Planning and Zoning Commission offers up one member to participate in the Blight Review Board. And um, I have ended up being that person and at the uh, will of the board, I have been serving as chairman of it, now finishing my second year doing that. So that gets you kind of to where we are today. And what is the Blight Review Board? How did it get started? How long has it been around? How many members does it have? Uh, yeah, let me tell you about the ordinance. There was an ordinance uh, creating the Blight Review Board passed by the town which was effective on January 1, 2017. So it is not a long-standing board. It's uh, somewhat relatively new. And so to a certain extent, we're still finding our way in how to do all that we need to do. But uh, to quote the ordinance, uh, the purpose of this ordinance is to define, regulate, prohibit, and abate housing blight in order to protect, preserve, and promote public health, safety, and welfare, and to maintain and preserve the beauty of neighborhoods and the general appearance of the town. So the uh, ordinance did uh, establish that there would be five members of the uh, board. As I said, uh, I serve as a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission, 
The ordinance also provided for a member from the Human Services Commission, the Commission on Aging, the Board of Selectmen, and the representative town meeting. So each of those uh, entities have uh, uh, given us members who are now making up the five members of the Blight Review Board. Um, the, um, oh, by the way, we have a, uh, a Blight Prevention Officer whose name currently is uh, Robert Salido. Uh, he is found in the Fire Marshal's Office, but he is uh, a part-time uh, uh, member of our group. So he is the guy who uh, uh, does the staff work for us. Um, <clears throat> so where would you like me to go from there? Well, the, specifically, the Blight Review Board only looks at residences and not commercial properties. Although I understand there's some discussion about changing that. Is that true? Exactly right. Yeah, the, uh, the ordinance is specific as for, uh, pertaining only to residential real property. But there is, in fact, uh, interest in our expanding that uh, purview which will actually be part of the agenda of our next meeting. Uh, there is some concern around town that there are commercial properties that are uh, having a detrimental effect on, uh, on neighborhoods that uh, perhaps should be attended to by the Blight Review Board. So we'll see where that goes. I should say that uh, uh, the, uh, the process for that would require an amendment to the ordinance, which would have to come from the Board of Selectmen and then the RTM we would simply be expressing our opinion on that topic, I think. So these are all uh, a, a process done locally. There are not any state laws about blight, is that correct? Actually, there is a state law that could enhance the fines that are imposed when a blight condition is found. So that uh, the town ordinance provides for a fine of $100 a day for the continuation of any blight condition. But a state ordinance where the uh, 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 conditions are particularly egregious and some of the circumstances are particularly egregious does permit us to go to $250 uh, a day. We have not done that to this point, have not felt that that would be useful. Uh, not that there haven't been some serious or egregious conditions, but we didn't think they'd be helpful for us to engage in the process through the state. So it's there, but we haven't used it as of this point. Yeah, it is a, a town uh, power permitted by state statute. George Riley is our guest on Inside Town Hall. He is the chair of the Blight Review Board. And so we understand the process of your body. Let's take a hypothetical example. Um, I own a home here in Darien. Uh, let's say that there is another house in my neighborhood, uh, which I think is an eyesore. Um, the lawn is not being cut. Uh, uh, I think the person is storing a boat under a blue tarp behind the house. Uh, the shutters on the front of the house seem to be falling off. Uh, I think there are some broken windows. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a raccoon living somewhere on the property and maybe in the, in the uh, attic because it seems to be a hole in the roof as well, too. Um, this concerns me because it's a, not only an eyesore, but I think it's hurting the value of my property. What do I do, Mr. Chairman? You reach out to our uh, staff person, uh, the blight prevention officer. You do that in a number of ways. Uh, but uh, I suggest you start with the town website where uh, you can readily search for the Blight Prevention Board, which will lead you to our web page, which will show you the individuals involved, including Mr. Salito's contact information. There is also uh, through the website, the Q Alert system, so that you can simply quick, click, click on the Q Alert and you can fill out the requisite information, the location, the nature of the complaint, and that will go quickly to Mr. Salido. Uh, Mr. Salido is charged with doing the initial investigation as to whether or not the conditions rise to the level of uh, potential blight. Um, 
<clears throat> and a number of the items you just suggested certainly would uh, rise to the level of blight, uh, specifically itemized in the ordinance, include overgrown brush and overgrown grass or weeds. Um, they may simply be vacant buildings or structures left unsecured and unguarded. Uh, there could be significant fire or water damage not repaired. Uh, collapsing walls and roofs, uh, broke, missing, missing, broken or boarded up windows. Those are all items uh, in the statute itself. So Mr. Salito at this time would go out and determine whether or not there is a likelihood of, of uh, blight. If he finds that it should be pursued, he would notify the property owner and tell the property owner he believes certain conditions uh, rise to the level of blight and give 30 days for remedying the situation or and or asking that the uh, property owner contact Mr. Salito and talk about what may be needed for that remedy. The town is very helpful when necessary in uh, doing some of this cleanup of various conditions. We'll offer up a, uh, a dumpster, for example. We've done it a number of times. Uh, that works in coordination with the uh, uh, the uh, Human Services Commission. Um, so Mr. Salido does what he can to help uh, the property owner understand the conditions and get them remedied. If they are not remedied within the time frame that he has established, he can then bring it to the board, um, the Blight Review Board, and suggest that the Blight Review Board call in that property owner, have a discussion, really a hearing, over whether or not the conditions actually are blight. And it is for the board to make that determination. If the board determines that it is blight, then the property owner is given another 30 days typically to remedy the situation. I should say that the board is uh, charged with not only making the determination of the blight condition, but also considering uh, whether the property owners are elderly, uh, we are authorized to consider their income levels, um, which is something we really never had the opportunity to pursue. I don't actually know how we would do that. Uh, we don't have any, any investigatory process for that. And uh, I certainly, and I know the rest of the board is not going to make any conclusion over just because of what we see on the property as to income level. So, but there are some potential mitigating circumstances and considerations that we can uh, engage in. Before, anyway, we get to the, before we get to those, let me just back up because my complaint has been filed yeah. and the blight uh, review officer has contacted the, the, the property in question, the owner of the property. Does that owner of the property get to know who it was that filed the complaint? Not necessarily, no. Um, the Q alert, uh, system does not require uh, a name, and uh, it may not be known. Um, in, in at least one case, we had a, a FOIA uh, request for that particular information, and with the advice of counsel and, and going to the state uh, agency that controls that, it was determined we did not need to give that name because there was some concern about what the reaction would be um, if that... Uh, information became known. Um, so it does not have to be included. Uh, uh, kind of depends on how it is handled uh, in the office uh, of the blight prevention officer himself. If the, if the complaints can be filed anonymously, uh, have you seen or is there a risk of people uh, complaining uh, just to annoy uh, a neighbor or somebody? I suppose that's possible. We have not seen that. Uh, no. In each case, I know that uh, Mr. Salito promptly investigates, and he has found not always light condition, but has always found the cause of the complaint. Uh, I've never heard him say, I don't know what the heck they were talking about. There's no reason I was there or anything of that sort. Uh, no. Uh, and hopefully no, nobody, no neighbor would do such a thing. But to rise to the definition of blight, it has to have more than one condition. Is that correct? In other words, it can't just be that the lawn's not being cut or that there's a boat being stored in the back. It has to be two or more. Is that, is that exactly right? Exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, in accordance with section three of the blight 
ordinance, that is true. Um, and uh, that's up to Mr. Salito in the first instance to determine whether there are two or more conditions, and then for the board to make the same determination. Now, you mentioned that uh, the Director of Human Services is a member of the Blight Review Board, because some of the cases that, that come before you are people who uh, need help. They're not just scoff laws. Um, they're not a bank who's foreclosed on a mortgage and is neglecting the property. These are people who are struggling and they need help. And, and, and how does human services uh, assist that person to uh, not only address the, you know, the blight complaint itself, but also maybe other conditions that might be found as a result of, of working with that person. I think you've, you, you don't use the word um, hoarder. Uh, I think I've heard you use the description of people who like to collect a lot of things in their homes. Uh, but this is not a, uh, uh, an avid collector as much as somebody who's got a, 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 perhaps a mental health issue. Yes, no question that uh, I think we may have a couple of examples of that. Um, Ali Ramstek is the uh, representative of the Human Services Commission who serves on our board. And she's probably the better one to direct your question to specifically. But I know that in the past, as I said, she does help arrange a, a, a dumpster where necessary. She establishes a bit of a relationship with the property owners, wh whether they reside there or elsewhere. She obviously tries to help them out to get them to live in appropriate conditions. Um, but sometimes it's very difficult to do that. There are a number of property owners who won't let her or us into their um, home. Um, and so we, you know, we, we don't have any authority to go inside the homes. So we just, and I know Ali tries to be rational with them and suggest that there are better ways. Um, she gets a fair amount of resistance from that, but in certain other cases, they accept the assistance gratefully. Um, unfortunately, I've seen too much recidivism in these issues. Uh, uh, we'll get things improved, but then they are left to deteriorate again, and uh, uh, we have to deal with that too. But uh, Ali has the uh, professional way of dealing with the social service issues. I was going to ask you about that because I think I, I can think of at least one case uh, where um, improvements were made, but uh, the lawn grew back up to uh, mammoth proportions again, and uh, the house still looks uh, pretty blighted. So um, how do you deal with that if you've gone through the process, if you've done everything that you can to help this individual, and uh, they just revert back to the, the same old behavior? Uh, begin the process again. Uh, we still need to uh, have the condition de determined again. Uh, I would say we are somewhat less patient with those property owners uh, when they come back to us a second time with the same issues. And um, uh, we become a little more insistent that uh, the, the remedy be implemented and, and um, maintained. Um, so that is an ongoing issue, no question about it. And uh, we will see. Uh, in, in some cases, most cases, we try not to have to impose fines, you understand. Uh, we try to work these things out. We hear the stories. We, this is in the hearing process or when we call them in for the discussion before the determination is found. And um, we try to respond sympathetically to uh, the, the, uh, what we are hearing from the property owners. But we do have the ability then to impose $100 a day, 30 days after a finding of light. And, um, and that, that adds up very quickly, I have to say. Uh, the property owners, so far, none of them have paid the fines, uh, but they are uh, ass assessed as a lien on their property. So whenever they go to sell the property, those liens are going to have to be paid. And certain expenses are also added to the liens, uh, attorney's fees and whatnot. So um, uh, we try to make clear to the, to the property owners that it is in their best interest to uh, get the condition remedied and maintain it properly. Um, uh, but we get some, I think there, there are a lot of uh, 
a lot of issues in people's heads about how they're going to handle that. And that's a very tough situation. But we have to be determined to uh, protect neighborhoods. George Riley is our guest today. Inside Town Hall is the name of the show. And we're talking about the work of the Blight Review Board on which he sits and is chair. Uh, George, would you say that the Blight Review Board has been in its uh, five years uh, work yeah. now? Has it, been, has it been successful? Yes, uh, we have in fact remedied uh, a number of properties. We have taken them off of our active uh, list and put them onto watch lists. Uh, Mr. Salido has been very effective in talking with property owners and explaining the situation. But I cannot tell you that we have had 100% success in that. Uh, we have a number of frustrations uh, that have been lingering too long. Um, uh, I like to think that we have made improvements in, in a number of properties, but others are going to require additional attention. Uh, and, um, and we're at it. So you, you mentioned that there is a, a, a potential of the Blight Review Board requesting the Board of Selectmen and the RTM to add commercial properties to your uh, purview. Um, are there any things that while they're redoing the ordinance that you would change about the existing ordinance on uh, homes? I uh, am not aware of any. I believe it's a very comprehensive definition of blight and uh, it's an appropriate definition. We've been able to work with it pretty readily. So I don't have a problem with that. I also think that um, uh, when this ordinance was crafted, it had a, uh, a very strict process of enforcement, uh, most of which I have relayed to you, which I, you know, is all about due process. And I think that it has uh, worked efficiently. Um, and so, I, uh, I don't have any current notion of tampering with any of that. Um, I guess I'd need to think whether or not any of that is also appropriate in the commercial situation, um, whether the definition needs a little tweaking on account of it being a commercial property. Um, I, I haven't gone there yet. We'll see about that. But uh, I don't think, this is a, I believe there'll be any significant revision to the um, basics of the ordinance. If if the Blight Review Board does go in front of the Board of Selectmen and the RTM seeking authority over commercial blight as well, too, what do you think the, the timeline on that would be? Um, since we are now into September, I think there are what, two more RTM meetings this year, probably, uh, maybe three, something like that. Uh, I suspect we'll be into next year before the amendment is written, the Board of Selectmen have acted on it. It's gone before the various committees of the RTM and the RTM has acted on it. Uh, those things will be out of our hands. If on uh, uh, the, uh, I think it's September 14th when it will be on our agenda, if we say, yeah, we think this is a good idea, we ought to um, include commercial uh, properties, we, uh, we'll then have to determine, do we go to council or do we first go to the Board of Selectmen and have them determine whether they ought to go to council to write the amendment itself? That, of course, can take some time. So um, I'm sure we're six months out before that would happen. Are there other towns and cities that have commercial blight ordinances? I, I happen to have seen in, in looking up uh, our own ability to do commercial properties, uh, a story of a Fairfield uh, blight uh, board, which did find a commercial property to be exhibiting blight conditions and took some action against it. So it, it was a, a commercial property. So yes, uh, there is apparently statutory authority from the state to include commercial properties. Well, as we say in the trade, we will have to stay tuned for further developments. George Riley, our guest today on Inside Town Hall, the chairman of the Blight Review Board. George, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, just send me a bill and uh, thank you. <laughs> turn for the meter your, off now. <laughs> yeah, you can turn the meter up. Thank you for right. your many years of service 
uh, to the town on all those boards and commissions, et cetera. You're very kind. I appreciate that, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, George. And thank you, our faithful viewers, for watching yet another edition of Inside Town Hall.